Now, let's talk about UKIP and yesterday's announcement from Diane James that she decided to leave the party. Now, you'll remember that Diane was UKIP leader for just 18 days earlier this autumn, a record, I think, before she stood down, blaming a lack of support from the party's executive. Ms James released a statement yesterday saying she had left UKIP because in recent weeks my relationship with the party has been increasingly difficult and I feel it is time to move on. One of the three candidates to be UKIP's next leader, John Rees Evans, joins me now. Welcome back to The Daily Politics. So Suzanne Evans, who's also standing for the leadership, says Diane James should stand down as an MEP. Do you agree? Uh, well, yes, I, mean, I would firstly say that on a personal level, I've got a lot of sympathy for Diane James because I can see what she's come up against because I'm up against the very same thing. And what is um, that? which is essentially a clique within Europe, uh, within, <laughs> it's very similar to Europe, a clique within UKIP that simply doesn't want reform. People who want to hold on to their jobs, people who have worked very hard ingratiating themselves you know, with the, the high-ups who now don't want to relinquish that control. And who are they? Okay, I mean, the easiest way to determine who they are is just to look at my Twitter feed and look at all the people who are attacking me. They're the same people who attacked Stephen Wolf, the same people who attacked Nathan, the same people who have attacked Diane. And James. are they the executive? Are they the ruling executive that yeah, run the party? Essentially, there are apparatchiks plus certain MEPs. Right. So, but do you think she should stand down as an MEP, Diane James, well, yeah, even if you have yeah, sympathy I, I, for her? In spite of my sympathy, the fact is she was elected on the basis of representing UKIP, so unfortunately her position is untenable if she's unable to remain with us. But if I may lead her, uh, I believe that I stand very good chance of persuading her to come back. Right. What about, though, looking at some of the other personalities in the party? You mentioned Stephen Wolfe, who's the ex-leadership candidate. Uh, the former Wales leader, Nathan Gill, now sits as an independent in the Welsh Assembly because apparently he couldn't uh, stand the UKIP fighting, in fighting. Um, I mean, it does look like the beginning of the end of UKIP. Or, alternatively, it looks like a kind of crisis which is sometimes necessary in order for people to identify the need for radical change. Radical change, which I am proposing. What are you proposing, though? What, what, yeah. what would you do yeah. to sort out the party? OK. Well, firstly, the problems we have at the moment are because people in positions of power and influence are all pulling in different directions, jostling to determine which direction they want the party to go, and that is why you have disunity at the moment. I would bring unity by shifting decision-making powers from the leadership to the membership so the whole party is pointing in the same direction. Do you think the you leadership need to understands that it is their sole responsibility to aim to elicit what is the will of the membership, to hold that to be sovereign and to drive for that uncompromisingly. Do you think you'd have to sack people before that could happen? Do you know, I think a lot of people would rebel against my leadership because the fact is these people who have worked themselves into positions of power won't want to relinquish that power easily. So you'd have to sack them? Well, yeah, if they don't cooperate with the will of the membership, there's no room for them in the party. It's what's, a democracy. What's your message to other MEPs who might be thinking of leaving? OK, they need to think very carefully about whether they truly believe in the concept of democracy or whether they simply want to feign their commitment to democracy to attain a position of power from which they may exploit their opportunity for influence to determine the future direction of the party on the basis of their own personal agenda. Right. I mean, despite what John Rees Evans says, he would do this if he became leader. At the currently, there are four, mm -hmm. um, I think, UKIP MEPs who are now former UKIP MEPs because mm -hmm. they sit as independents mm -hmm. in the European Parliament. Um, if we take Stephen Wolfe, for example, he was alleged to have had talks with the Tories. Mm -hmm. Would you like to see them join the Tory party? No. I mean, this is, in a way, UKIP has succeeded, hasn't Jonathan? What, what the campaigning mission of this party was to have, have a referendum and have Britain vote to leave the EU, that has been done. I think we're seeing the terminal spasms of a political movement now, which is only going to get uglier, actually. Do you think it's the end and of the party? I, I do. And I, and I actually think Nigel Farage, rather than sipping cocktails in the Trump Tower, perhaps should be back working with the party for whom he did so much to try and sort it out if he believes in it. So I think it's a terrible shame for people who have voted for, for UKIP but in a way, they've succeeded in their core mission. Uh, apart from that, I've seen nothing that UKIP has ever contributed to the national political debate. And I think perhaps Jonathan should think about, um, you know, perhaps joining another party. Well, thank you very much for that, Claire. But the fact is, all you've seen is phase one nearing its completion. Phase two is going to get much more exciting. And that is the revolution in British politics. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a direct democracy movement, if I am elected leader, that is going to hemorrhage support from parties like yours.
and for Labour. So not a referendum. We've had we well we're, we've had we're, a, we've not, had no, a we're big not talking demo- about a referendum. Okay. We're talking about internal direct democracy within a political party in Britain. We're talking about giving the ordinary members a voice. Well, we we elect our leaders in a very, if I might say, fairly orderly way. Yes, and, then and, we, and then we give it out to our. And I have to Are you say frightened things, of this sort of yes. thing? Are you frightened by the idea of the direct democracy? Well, I, I, that I, I, direct democracy always are. seems to uh, translate into lots and lots of abuse on, on social media, as Jonathan said. So I'm, I'm pretty happy that my party has a pretty inter- a t- internally consistent democratic process for electing our leaders. And in fact, it was my party who gave the British gov- British people the biggest democratic exercise we've ever had with the referendum. You were forced I'm proud to of that. by UKIP, and well, it is no, your party that is so. blocking the process. Oh, Let dear. me tell you what parliamentary democracy in its current form has produced. You have a clear majority of the British people voting mm-hmm. to no longer under be under the power of anti-democratic, unelected representation abroad, right. and you have your party who are trying to block it. Let, the well, let me let I'm, Claire, I'm sorry, let me I'm let Claire sorry. answer. Well, look, I, I'm afraid I don't know quite what Jonathan's been. been uh, he's perhaps he's been having cocktails in Trump Tower too, because oh. my party is absolutely unified, unlike the Labour Party, I might add, behind our Prime Minister on delivering Brexit, but delivering it. Although in not way, unified in how it no, should no, no, be no, delivered. No, delivering it in a way that does not impoverish this country for the sake. Of some ideology that should be chucked in the, into the annals of history. We John, need to have a smart Brexit that works for the country. John, Surely you agree with that. John Rees Evans, let's just move on to something else because you say you want to unleash um, a direct democracy revolution. Um, you've already conceded that there is a lot of abuse going on uh, against yes, you yes. and Diane and James bullying. and bullying. Um, news that the UKIP Cheshire County chairman, along with other party officials, are standing down from the party over what they say is a lack of support, a lack of respect for the volunteer party, and alleged yes. bullying. Um, I mean, even figures like Suzanne Evans have Mm -hmm. said that they have been bullied. This sounds like an impossible task Mm -hmm. to deal with, even if you became leader. How would you deal with it? It's not... The the, the fact is, not to get too personal here, but my whole life I've been committed to to challenges where people have told me it's impossible. You know, frankly, I relish the opportunity to go up against all of these bullies, bullies who have driven some of the best talent out of our party. What about, though, the investigation on the financial front? Mm -hmm. So something completely different, this time from the Electoral Commission into UKIP finances and allegations they accepted unlawful donations during the Brexit referendum. What have you got to say about the inquiry? I'm not privy to the financial details of what went on, Mm. but on the basis of what I have learnt about certain people who I'm not at this stage going to name, these things can be resolved at a later stage once we have an elected NEC and we look properly at what has gone on in the past. But on the basis of what I have come to understand about some of the morality of some of the people who are opposing me and who have opposed Diane James, it wouldn't surprise me if certain abuses happen. Oh, right. So you wouldn't be surprised if there had no, been some impropriety on the no. financial side. But is the party broke? I, again, I'm not privy to the financial details. You- yeah, I'm, I'm not privy to that. Uh, the, the official position is that, that no, we're not. But honestly, I don't know what the answer is. Right, so you don't know what you might be taking on. No. What do you think about um, Donald Trump asking for Nigel Farage to be uh, ambassador to Washington? Well I, well, I think we need to go back to him and say, yeah, thanks for that. But the reality is we'd really prefer Nigel Farage to be the US ambassador to the European Union. I think he'd be better suited <laughs> to that role. Well, best of luck with that message. John Rees Evans, thank you.